I'm joined now by three colleagues from the Parliamentary Press Gallery. Susan Delacourt's a columnist for the Toronto Star. Joël Denis Bellavance is the Parliamentary Bureau Chief for La Presse. And John Iveson's a columnist for the National Post and Parliamentary Bureau Chief for Post Media. Good to see you all again. Uh, Susan, a, a fairly remarkable uh, day in the House of Commons watching this China vote play out. And I guess let's start there. Uh, so many Liberal MPs supporting the China genocide motion while the Prime Minister and his cabinet decided to abstain from this vote. Uh, what's the Prime Minister's calculation, do you think, here? Uh, you're right. It was a remarkable split. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure I can ever remember one where um, it was everybody except the cabinet. I don't, uh, as far as my memory serves, I don't remember anything like that. I guess what the calculation is, is uh, this allows the prime minister to tell China in whatever negotiations are going on with China over any number of things at the moment, look, um, the government is one thing and MPs are another. We sometimes don't distinguish that, but uh, Trudeau, I think mm. Trudeau is the one who drew this line obviously, and I'm assuming that it is has to do with ongoing negotiations over trying to get the Michaels, uh, the two Michaels out of detention, and any other number of things that uh, are on this government's agenda with China. Mm -hmm. A very complicated story, and I sure. think that uh, it, it, it looks simple from, uh, from this vote, but it's... Uh, it tells me that things are complicated, as they say it is. Yeah, Joël Denis, what are your thoughts here? And it, it was it sort of struck me in watching uh, this vote play out. Uh, as Susan mentions, you have uh, the caucus sort of going one way and the cabinet going the other way. Um, you know, how much do you think that played into it over the last number of days? The, the prime minister must have seen that his caucus wanted to go with this vote, uh, no matter what he was saying. Yeah, exactly. And I would say that there's domestic politics to it and international politics to it. Domestically, I think this, going to hurt, this is going to hurt the prime minister and his cabinet because the opposition parties all line up and the majority of the caucus of the Liberal Party said yes, had voted in favor of that motion. So the prime minister will be accused of not having enough courage to denounce this situation in China as a genocide. Now, internationally, the prime minister, has met, I think I agree with uh, Susan, is trying to give himself a uh, margin of maneuver because facing China has not been very easy for the prime minister over the last few years. And the diplomacy, will how will it work? Now, the interesting thing to watch now is the uh, reaction from China. Yeah, well, we know that the uh, Chinese ambassador uh, ahead of... Yeah, he was on our program warned. earlier, Joel Danini. He's not happy. Yeah. He's not happy. And he was warning parliamentarians not to go in that direction. So now what will be the consequences? We'll find out in the next few days. Uh, John, what are your thoughts on how this all played out today? Well, I think as, a, as an act of political subversion, the uh, the Conservatives have done a good job. You know, it's a, a divide and conquer. You've you've got uh, you've carved off the op all of the opposition parties, and most of the caucus, and left the cabinet stranded, looking kind of uh, unprincipled and unmoored. Um, you know, I think there are reasons. Obviously, that, that China's uh, behaviour here is abhorrent. I mean, there is clear evidence of sterilisation, which fits the bill as far as the UN definition is concerned. It means that you're trying to uh, stop births in, in, uh, in a given ethnic group. But at the same time, from a diplomatic point of view, I can understand why Trudeau's done what he's done. I, I don't think, from the Michael's point of view, that it would be productive. But I also think, you know, what next? You have, you have leveled the charge, the ultimate charge, and essentially right. gone nuclear in diplomatic terms, by levelling the charge of of, uh, of genocide. Uh, most times genocide is levelled against when there's clear evidence of mass murder in the cases of the Holocaust, Rwanda, Bosnia. Uh, that's not the case here. And I think if you do level the charge of genocide, it, it does lead to the question, well, what next? What are you going to do? Yeah, it I it guess. Su suggests you cannot... You've got to level severe penalties, and it suggests you cannot deal with the Chinese. Yeah. And I think in the 21st century, not dealing with the Chinese is not a realistic proposition. All right, let's let's uh, move along. But I think to to, to another story that's uh, we're following. Uh, Susan, Justin Trudeau, and Joe Biden will hold a virtual meeting mm -hmm. on Tuesday, and I suspect the China genocide issue will come up along with a uh, request for U.S. help in securing the release of the two Michaels from China. Um, what else is Justin Trudeau looking for from Joe Biden out of that meeting? Oh, I think there's a number of things that we've already seen that Joe Biden is supposed to be our friend, but he's got this Buy American um, philosophy and approach that is not helpful to us. Uh, Keystone, that's a lost cause. I take it that uh, 
when I was talking to PMO officials over the weekend, they said energy will come up, but um, but I I don't think uh, Trudeau has already spoken twice to mm-hmm. Joe Biden about Keystone. Biden made his decision on that. That's gone. So, but I do expect climate to play a huge role in this. I think um, definitely the idea that um, Canada and the United States have got to work together on COVID and, and COVID prevention more than they have been. I think. But the, the real objective for tomorrow's meeting is to set a tone, is to show that the Donald Trump days are over. They, whether they do that really directly or, or with sort of subtle nudges right. here and there, but I think it's to say this is a brand new era in Canada-U.S. relations. Joel Denis, does it, do we need to hear more than that uh, from this meeting? I mean, there's a lot at stake uh, for Canada, but... It, I, I guess I'm wondering whether we've seen any indication yet that Joe Biden is better for or will be better for Canada than Donald Trump was. Well, that's a good point. And last week, remember that Mr. Biden participated in a G7 meeting and also uh, a multilateral meeting with European countries. And he said, Washington is back. And one way to uh, uh, pursue that message is to work closely with Canada, which has been historically, the, uh, the U.S. most closely allied. So that will signal that Washington is back working closely with uh, Canada. Out of that meeting, a few things that you should expect, Peter, is the following. Uh, the uh, Canada and United States will sign a deal uh, to try to create a North American file for electric cars and also mm-hmm. batteries, manufacturing batteries that will produce and uh, augment, uh, increase the number of electric cars uh, on the highways in the United States and in Canada. So because th- we want to compete China on that regard, which, you know, uh, quite uh, heavily uh, um, um, concentrated on trying to build uh, low emission cars. So mm-hmm. that's one thing that will happen. And also on COVID, as, as uh, um, uh, Susan noted, we want to work more closely with uh, the United States on COVID vaccination campaigns and all that. So what will, whether uh, Michigan, um, the Pfizer of, uh, plant in Michigan uh, will be raised, that remains to be seen because we could uh, use more uh, vaccines, obviously, obviously right. from the United States. Although so far, Joe Biden's position has been to, to, to follow Donald Trump, John, and say uh, you can't have any of the vaccine produced in the United States yet. Uh, what are you watching for out of this meeting, John? Well, I think it will be a relatively comfortable meeting for, for Trudeau. I mean, it, it's, it's uh, I think, a good thing that it's the first one-on-one meeting. Um, you know, clearly Canada was the first phone call that he made. Now now it's the first one-on-one meeting. I think there is a sense that we're back to a, an integrated North American economy, um, which I think we will see, you know, from a climate change point of view, this idea that you would have a, a periphery around North America of, of tariffs, essentially. And if countries who don't have any kind of climate policies, then they have to pay the tariff. Mm. I think uh, by American, we might see some sense that you know, supply chains are so integrated that you can't just cut off at the border and say that uh, goods coming from Canada will be subject to uh, to some kind of tariff or, or favoritism towards American companies. I think the, the integ- integration is such that some kind of deal, so the same as uh, Harper and Obama struck, um, which essentially allowed the supply chains to continue regardless of by American. So I think it's, I think that it's, it's all going to be positive. I don't see any areas of negativity unless there is a, some kind of uh, vaccine diplomacy is played and, and, and America uh, starts to say that some of the suppliers who we've signed contracts with will not be sending uh, vaccine to Canada. Mm-hmm. That might be one imponderable. All right. Uh, look, we lots to keep an eye on tomorrow. Thanks for your time today, and we'll be in touch again. Take care, everybody. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter.